My guest today, you know her as cast member of MTV's Jersey Shore, reality star Nicole Polizzi, better known as Snooki. Welcome, Nicole. Uh, Hi, Nicole. How are you? Hi. Thanks so much for joining us today. Of course. I have to get your glasses. I have to get the Snooki shades. I just have to. Oh, my They're God. They're so cool. A whole box of shades. Okay, this is this is what I was gonna say. Like, I'll send you like all the bone broth, all the collagen, like all the things. I want those damn shades. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll do a trade. We'll do <laughs> we'll do a trade. One of the things that I'm so interested about your story is I love seeing where someone started and where they ended up. And you're like the consummate ultimate story and transformation. Because I see you as somebody who transformed their life. Like you just really just completely elevated every part of your life. So I have to know, like just starting out, like where was the point in your life where you said, you know what, I'm changing things up? I got knocked up. <laughs> I mean, listen, I I was like your typical upstate New York small town girl. Like, you know, we had nothing to do. So we just started drinking at 16 and like garage parties and orchards. So mm -hmm. I was always like, you know, the life of the party, love to party. And then I went on Jersey Shore, just turned 21. So of course, like my first time legally in bars and clubs. So I went crazy. Um, and then 24, 24 years old, I met my husband. And then um, we were in Vegas like going crazy, traveling, <laughs> LA. And then we went from Vegas to LA. And I was like, wait, I'm like a week late at my period. What is happening? So we took the test in LA. And that's when we found out. So mentally, I was like, all right, I got this. Like mentally threw away the vodka, the cigarettes. And I was like, we're going to be parents now. This is happening. What made you decide to, uh, you have this store and you're selling some really cool things. What made you decide to go into merchandising and retail and all that? I always love clothes. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I feel like I had that outlet to where I could. So I started my store in like 2010 online. And then I didn't open my stores until 2018 or 19. Um so I don't know. I, I just feel like, you know, I wasn't really doing reality. Like the show was off, you know, I wasn't doing mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. up here. And there. But I was like, I want to do something like I'm bored, you know, I'm just at home with the kids. Like I want to be able to have a legit business to where I could go to and like, you know, like kind of play house. So be like, <laughs> oh, let's, let's go. Let's go to my shop. Let's go to my work. Um, so, yeah, I just now I have three stores. That's awesome. Congratulations for that. That's that's an amazing success. So when you started doing the Jersey Shore, did you think it was going to be the success that it was? I mean, did you have any idea? Did you kind of oh. just fall into it and then all of a sudden everybody knew who you were? Well, I always wanted to do real world. So I tried out for that. It never happened. And then I see this um, casting of Guidos and Guidettes. So I was like, oh, this is like go for me. So I literally went for the free alcohol, the free room. Like we're <laughs> really staying down the shore where I go anyway, you know, for free. So I was like, I'm doing this. And mm -hmm. you know, we had no idea. We thought it was going to be like one season and then go back to our life. So we had no idea. No idea. I think you just those things, you don't know what's going to hit, what isn't. And when it does, it's incredible. I want to talk about how you grew up in terms of your relationship with food, because to me and talking to so many people, it always starts with somehow you like anchor something into your, your cells when you're young and you develop a relationship from food from there. So what was it like growing up? What kind of foods did you eat? All that good stuff. Oh, I love fast food. I was a fatty. So um, I, I grew up doing competitive gymnastics till I was like, mm. so it was just like a lot of training, like three days, four days a week for like two hours. And it was exhausting. But after practice, I would always be like, mom, can I go to Burger King? Like I deserve it. So I always like, <laughs> Burger King and I love the fast foods. Um, so as a kid, I definitely wasn't a healthy eater. And then once I was done with um, gymnastics and then I, I went to cheerleading because it was just too much for me as a teenager. I went to cheerleading and um, that's when I started to like look at myself and not eat. And I definitely had an anorexia problem for like three years. What would you tell someone that had that problem? Like, what would you say to them? You know, in, inside, I still suffer it from it a little, but like, I, I just, I eat what I want and whatever. And if I work out and I try and get back to normal, but it's still in my brain. Um, so in high school, 
I was just like, I wanted to not lose my spot as a flyer. So I was like, I need, I was a senior. I was like, I need to be tinier than these freshman girls. They're going to take my spot. So Mm -hmm. I would literally just eat one celery stick a day or um, just tomatoes because it's filled with just water. I would just eat tomatoes constantly eating like one thing a day to where like it started to, you know, make me moody and I was tired all the time. I couldn't even get through cheer practice. Um, so then my coach sat me down she was like, you need to eat. And then she scared me saying, you know, this is a huge problem. Like you could die. So right then and there, I just started eating healthy. So like eating the salads and working out and doing all that. So, you know, when she said I'm going to die, I was like, Oh my God. So I just started eating right away, but like healthy things. So now, um, I mean, I really don't care what I look like. I just, I just accepted it ever since I was like 22. I was like, it is what it is. I love my body no matter what, but inside I'm like, okay, so if I'm going to have this pizza, I need to like work out for an hour. Like it's always like in my mind, like I'm calculating if I'm going to do this, I have to do this. Um, so I just think it's a struggle always, but I, I learned to love my body and it is what it is. <laughs> I, I love that you learned to love your body. And I, I have to tell you, thank you so much for trusting me and sharing that. Because a lot of people don't share these things that are really going to help other people. But no. when, yep. Yeah, it's a yeah. big deal. It's a big deal to help people with this. So when you were going through that, did you have any other health problems? You were fatigued all the time. And did you notice like anything happening with like menstrual cycles? Was your hair thinning? Did you notice any other physical ailments from not eating properly? Oh yeah. So I didn't, I, my period was like nothing. Mm-hmm. I would like have it for like a day and then just gone. So mm-hmm. my period definitely messed up. Um, Nothing with my hair or anything. I just feel like I'm like a very fun and positive and bubbly person. I was mm-hmm. so negative and down and just moody and just like growth. And um, I was tired all the time. It was terrible. When you're not eating healthy or when you're doing things that are counterproductive, it affects your mental health because you start getting cranky. You start getting depressed. You start feeling all these feelings that you were feeling during that time. And people don't make the connection to food. And so I just wanted to take a moment to point that out, that we're having so many people that have depression, anxiety, all of these things that are happening mentally. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's connected to food because there's something called the gut brain axis. So you can't separate the two. You can't separate physical beauty, physical health and mental health. You can't separate them. They're all one. So I'm glad that you straightened all that out. And it's, you should feel really good about yourself because you you took care of that in three years. And for a lot of people, I hear people 10 years, 15 years. So you you did well in three years. That's great. Still in the back of my head always, but I don't act on it. I'm just like, shut up. You're too old for this. It's very hard not to have those 24 hour day thoughts or those calculations all day. So that's the whole trick with eat, you know, eating healthy or lifestyle is to know what you're supposed to eat. And like you said, I am who I am. Like you've come to this place of body acceptance. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. That's, it is. that's, that is. Yeah. So body acceptance, she calls it like it is what it is. It means the same thing. Like that's your, that's the Nicole version. It is what it is. What's your guilty pleasure for food? No, I do love pasta, but I feel like my guilty pre- pleasure is I'm like treating myself Um, definitely pizza and fries are like my go-to. Your pizza and fries? Pizza and fries. What do you layer your pizza with? I do love pepperoni. Mm -hmm. Um, and normally, no, I would actually do a calzone. I love calzone. Mm. So if I treat myself, I would order a nice calzone stuffed with, um, cheese and pepperoni. Oh my gosh. You see, I was like the thin crust. I grew up very Italian and we, my father would take us to all these places for like real Italian pizza. He'd always say it has to be real Italian. So it's crunchy. It's so good. That's okay. The crunch, you got to have the crunch. (laughs) The crunch is everything. So is there like, talk about a few things in your fridge. So I do my seltzers. I do my Pellegrinos and all of that. Um, but honestly, I, I try to eat very healthy because I love I love grilled chicken. I love spinach. I love broccoli. And I realize the air fryer is just amazing. You Hello. Can all of that. So, you know, one of you know, one of the best things to air fry is you take apples and you cut them up and you put cinnamon and you put nutmeg and you put a little bit of oil on them like or ghee. Ghee is even better. Ghee gives it a real it makes your whole house smell good. They come like a little bit like 
gooey and crunchy. Oh, yeah. Like your kids would go nuts for those. Yeah. And it's it's like 18 minutes in the air fryer. No, it's so easy. So, you know, I'm a mom of three, so it's really hard for me to actually like, you know, prepare meals for an hour. It's just not happening. And I'm not a very good cook. You know, I have to like follow instructions and stuff. So the fact that I have the air fryer, I do grilled chicken in there, like a batch done for the week. Um, broccoli, I put like garlic, salt, a little oil, and then I drizzle like balsamic when it comes out. So good. I do the same with asparagus um, and green beans. So I do, I have to say, I love vegetables. Like sometimes when we're out to eat and like everyone's splurging, I'll, I'll get spinach. I'm like, I just want like a big side of spinach. And that's why like my stomach is always bloated. It's fine. But I just love, I love my greens. I'm always You're, bloated. Yeah. Oh yeah. We can fix that. Your head will spin. Here's why a lot of the patients that I see over the years come in bloated. You have to repopulate your gut. So what do I mean by that? That means we hear a lot about things like leaky gut or gut health and all of that, but let me just simplify everything for you. We have these things in our, our body, okay? They're bacteria, actually, and we got to have more good bacteria than bad bacteria. So, so regulating your gut, gut health, is what you should be focusing on. That is going to be really important for you. So one of the things that I do, you know, I talk a lot about bone broth. This is not an ad adversarial type of uh, segment at all. But one of the reasons why I got into soups and broths and bone broths and all of that stuff is because I was, even when I went through a period where I was doing fitness contests, bodybuilding, all that stuff, I'd still be bloated. And my stomach, I would eat one piece of food and my gut would pop out and it drove me crazy. And then after I had my kids, I, it was really hard. I had my kids older. It was really hard for me to lose weight. So I got into bone broth because of the collagen and the gelatin in there. It helped a lot with bloating. So, and it did that because it heals the gut. So like when you're eating foods and you're thinking to yourself, well, I, you know, I worked out or I, uh, uh, so I don't have, I can do more of this because I worked out that whole register thing that you're talking about. The register thing, that calculation that should be going on in your brain should be, uh, am I eating anti-inflammatory foods? Am I eating pro-inflammatory foods? Things that bring inflammation to my body, things that take inflammation out of my body. But more importantly, are these foods good for gut health? That's what you, because that's my calculation. Because yeah. I know if my gut health is in order, losing weight and like having good skin, all of that, it's way, way, way easier. So that would be the one thing that I would tell you just from our conversation that I would do. So this is what I would make sure you have in your diet because you like greens. Nicole, any kind of garlic or onions, by the way, they're what we call a prebiotic. And you need prebiotics and probiotics because the prebiotics help the probiotics grab, they help, it holds on to them. It's like the fertilizer. You need good fertilizer. Asparagus is the best one. So adding a lot of asparagus, making sure you have garlic, onion, um, artichokes are, are a really good prebiotic fiber. Did you ever hear of something called jicama? It's like yeah. a root vegetable. You, it's very crunchy and sweet. You can dip it in guacamole, dip it in different things. Kids love it. I used to give it to my kids when they were young and it's like because I had a hard time getting them to eat vegetables a lot when they were little and it was the one vegetable they loved. So yeah. Yeah. So this is the one. So I would add these, make sure you have those things into your diet, put them in your rotation. And then mm -hmm. for probiotics, probiotics are really going to help the, but it's going it, to, it's, you need the fertilizer and then you need healthy bugs. So the healthy part of this to get these, these microbes healthy, things like yogurt. And I like, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of dairy. I'm just not because it makes people, it's congestive for a lot of people, but they have yeah. coconut, they have coconut type of, um, they, it's made with all kinds of nut milks now. You I can get yogurt. I have a lot of dairy in my diet. Good, because it, it, it yeah. honestly, it makes a lot of other things that you're trying to do more difficult. And people yeah. don't make that connection. They don't realize, oh, my nose is running all the time. Or, you know, I'm feeling bloated. I'm feeling, all of these th feelings that people have, they don't make the connection that it's dairy. So what I tell yeah. people is when it comes to dairy, what I have found in practice is that what most people can handle the most is dairy that the molecules are smaller. Things like manchego, cheese, manchego, it's got a really good taste to it. And people seem to be able to handle that a little bit better. They can yeah. handle things like Parmesan on a Caesar salad, things like that. But um, so you want things like 
uh, sauerkraut, you want the healthy yogurt, kombuchas that don't have a lot of sugar in them are great. Kimchi is how I get mine. I have eggs in the morning and I put like two tablespoons of kimchi. Do you know what that is? Mm -mm. It's just this, it's like a different kind of uh, greens and you like greens. Yeah. And that, yeah. And so you buy them and like they, they come in glass jars. They're great. And you just take like a tablespoon or two and it's just fermented vegetables and it's great. And that's how that's, I do that every day. That way I know I'm getting good probiotics and that's it. So cooking with a lot of things like garlic and onion, having asparagus as part of your green rotation mm. while you're trying to repopulate your gut. I know that everybody says that raw vegetables are awesome and they are awesome, but they're only awesome if you can digest and metabolize them right. And because your gut health needs a little boost, needs a little kickstart, that's probably why you're getting bloated because you're eating a lot of these raw vegetables. So totally. Yes. So, so, I, so totally. I love them. I love them too. But you might want to like steam them and have them different ways just until yeah. you start repopulating the gut. Focus on that. It won't take you a long time. Just start yeah. focusing on that and the bloat will go away. And by the way, I got to give you another bloat tip. So when I have like, if I'm on going on GMA or I've got like some big media hit, what I always do is I have cucumbers and avocados and I load them with olive oil. That's such a good deep bloater. That's your defense right there. Oh. Okay. That's so you have cucumbers, avocados, load them with olive oil and then drink green tea. And that's what I do before every show. That's crazy. Yep. Do that. And then your lemon water and you'll be good to go. That's like oh. you. Yep. You, yeah. It's because it, it brings down all inflammation. So you want to do that naturally as possible. So cucumbers, olive oil, avocado, and sip on lemon water. And then that'll make your stomach flat. Amazing. Yeah. You'll love that. Mm -hmm. So what is the thing? What are you most excited for in the future? I don't know, because I feel like everything that I wanted, I manifested and it happened. So, okay, okay, see that? She said she, this is why you're succeeding, okay? I yeah. hope everybody heard that. She is well aware, it's like, so she's energetically got it, okay? So that explains a lot of things to me. She understands that uh, success doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't come to you, you know, in that, this, the way that people think it does. You right. actually bring it, you bring it to you, you pull it to, towards you. Because yeah. you manifest things. And I feel like you, that there really isn't anything I can't do because I can manifest. No, yeah. If you watch the first um, episode, first season of Jersey Shore, I said I wanted to find my husband and have tan babies and <laughs> have a big career. And then I literally had that. I met my husband. We have three gorgeous tan babies. Um so I feel like I, I, everything that I do, I manifest, I write it down. I say, this is what I'm going to do this year. I'm going to get it done. I don't think twice about it. And I just do it. Mm, I love it. Well, this has been a great conversation. I love talking to you. You got it all together. And don't forget about the cucumbers, olive oils, and avocado. It's going to be your best friend. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to do that this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's great talking to you and uh, I'll see you around. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye, Nicole. Thank you. I really hope for everyone at home that this conversation with Nicole gave you an at home little extra inspiration and learning a little bit about, you know, it is what it is and learning the steps, the hero's journey that it takes to transform and that you can get to the place where you really do appreciate and love who you are and the body you're in.